Thank you very much for having me. It's, it's great to be here and um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the media. There were some videos that came out recently, I think, on CNN, some undercover videos. So I have a little presentation. I'm going to show you some clips. I'm going to talk about where things stand with the mainstream media. So right now we have a crisis in journalism. We have a big problem. People do not trust. They don't know where to get their information from. And there's a power shift happening right now. Power is shifting away from the mainstream media towards the citizenry. And you're, happening that, you're seeing that happen right now. People don't trust them. And you've seen the polls. A lot of people just, there's a consensus about fake news and misinformation that's prevalent in the media. So we decided to do a little experiment. If we went and undercover in the mainstream media, could we expose how these people really think, what their motivations are? Are they motivated by truth, by money? Are they lazy? Is it greed? And that's sort of what I'm going to talk to you about today. And we called our series American Pravda. Now the interesting thing about the Russian Pravda, as you see behind me, is that the thing about people maybe knew they were being misled. They knew they were being lied to. With the New York Times, I'm not so sure many Americans do know they're being lied to. But that was until recently. When we went undercover into CNN and exposed something that we all suspect to be the case. Some people say, at Veritas, we confirm suspicions. Well, check out this guy, supervising producer John Bonifield in Atlanta, talking about why the media continues to harp about Russia. Then why is CNN constantly like, Russia this, Russia that? Because it's ratings. Because it's ratings? Our ratings are incredible right now. And the CEO of CNN said in our internal meeting, he said, good job everybody covering the climate accords, but we're done with it, let's get back to Russia. <laughs> but honestly, you'd, you'd think the whole Russia shit is just like bullshit. Could be bullshit. I mean, it's mostly bullshit right now. Like, we don't have any big giant proof. I just feel like they don't really have it, but they, they want to keep digging. Mm -hmm. And so I think the president is probably right to say, like, look, you are witch hunting. Like, you have no smoking gun. You have no real proof. So there it is. A producer on tape admitting what we all suspect to be the case, that this whole thing is a witch hunt. There's no smoking gun. Of course, he's almost naked in his honesty. He's, he's so honest about it. He's not exactly a villain. And over the last few weeks, and recently, the ratings of CNN have actually gone down. People are leaving these networks in droves. Russia. 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 And they just keep talking about Russia. 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 We've actually seen the media double down over the last few weeks. They're so invested in this story, they have no choice but to keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. It's a lose-lose situation for them. Russia. And here's an interesting anecdote. After we released this story, the Washington Post, if you only read the Washington Post you'd, and you didn't watch YouTube, you'd only see an article that came out with a headline with the latest James O'Keefe video left out. It doesn't talk at all about the substance of the investigative videos. But here's the interesting thing. It says, the video, the video doesn't disclose that the producer is based in Atlanta, not in Washington or New York, where most of CNN's coverage are produced. So this Washington Post reporter attacked me and attacked us for omitting a fact. Well, we didn't omit that fact in the video. This is what I stated in the video. I'd like to introduce you to CNN supervising producer John Bonifield in Atlanta. So there, there it is. I clearly said he's from Atlanta and the Washington Post reports that I didn't say he was from Atlanta. So we sent an email to the Washington Post asking for a retraction. Naturally, they lied. John Bonifield, uh, the, the report at the Washington Post was not willing to give a retraction. He actually s sent an email saying, uh, drop dead. Washington Post reporter asking us to drop dead. 
after we asked him to retract his lie. But finally, Sunday night, just two weeks ago, they issued a full retraction. And we framed the retraction <laughs> because people don't realize that the most important thing is to hold the media accountable. These people, their entire business model is based upon the fact that they have relevance. When they create lies, and this is just an example, I've got thousands, I only have 30 minutes here with you guys. I could show you example after example just like this. It couldn't be any more clear cut of a lie. And it's the things that you don't see. It's the things that, I, I, I mean I put pressure on the Washington Post. Our attorney sent them a letter after he said drop dead. But it's the things you don't see. This is why I frame it in an ornate gold frame and then my office is just filled with retractions. It's, my, it's the proudest achievement. But, it's, but their entire media business model is based upon anonymous sources. Well, anonymous sources should be used sparingly. They should be used when you're credible, when people believe you. I can't use anonymous sources. They wouldn't believe me. I have to show video. But I just wanted to show you that example. After the CNN videos came out, of course, the white, this really makes their head explodes. When the White House says, go watch these Veritas videos. I would encourage everybody in this room and frankly, everybody across the country to take a look at it. So they're encouraging the press pool to look at our videos. Of course, that really makes their heads explode. And then, and then of course, they say, well, that's just an isolated incident. The first guy, he's not a political producer. He's an he's a Atlanta producer. So what do we do the next day? We, we drop another video. And this one is on the most political of political people. This is on Van Jones, who says that the Russia thing is just a nothing burger. It sort of entered the lexicon over the last few days, uh, what, hey, what Dan Jones said. We met in Palm Springs a few years back. With you, man. You good? Yeah. How you been? What are you okay. doing? What, what, what do you think is going to happen this week, I mean, with the whole Russia thing? Uh, the Russia thing is just a big nothing burger. Really? Yeah. You don't think that... Uh... So tell us how you really think, Van Jones, right? And then there were, the, of course, these memes. This is probably the most entertaining thing about our work is that they create these incredible memes. That's my favorite one. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know if you, what's the show, the name of the show this is from? Uh, Keenan and Kel, I think. So people were creating these memes and now it's really, and this is incredible. When you actually expose the truth, when you actually reveal these people's real motivations, you watch them on television and they appear so uncomfortable. Watch this clip of Anderson Cooper and Van Jones and look at how uncomfortable Van Jones is for being exposed. This guy is a hoaxer, he's a fraudster, he's been convicted, he's paid fines, they have to apologize, he's a scumbag, and he does this stuff all the time. So when on the tape you say that the Russian investigation was a big nothing burger, what do you mean? I meant for progressives to keep jumping up and down about this doesn't make a lot of sense. No, he's definitely very uncomfortable there. I love how Anderson Cooper asks him, what did you mean by that? And of course the tapes go on and on. We have people, we have undercover reporters embedded inside CNN. And they're the ones now who have to be held accountable. This is Jimmy Carr, an associate producer for Chris Cuomo's show, the morning show on CNN, talking about what he really thinks about the White House. We all recognize he is a clown, that he is hilariously un unqualified for this, that he's really bad at this, and that he does not have America's best interests. We recognize his just fucking crazy. But it'd be fair to question the intellect of the American voter. Oh no, they're stupid shit. <laughs> we actually had uh, that also uh, woman, Kellyanne Conway, you know, the blonde. Who's, who's sorry, Kellyanne Conway? Well, she looked like the. Is she the one with she the. She looks like Shannon Bishop. Uh, <laughs> she looks like Shannon Bishop. <laughs> 90% of us are on board with just, with just the fact that he's crazy. What do you mean? 90% are on board what? The, like, uh, with, with her? No, I wouldn't say with her, but just acknowledge the fact that he's finished. Uh, 90% of And the interesting thing about this clip is that the American voter is stupid. 
Now aside from all the, the foul language here, what's interesting is the conflict of visions between the mainstream media, which does not trust the American voter to draw their own conclusions if given information. They do not want you to have the raw information. They have to construct this false reality and present it to you and shove conclusions down your throat. And that's what you're seeing with these producers. The people are stupid. They don't know what to do. They don't know who to vote for. We have to tell them who to vote for. That's the conflict that's taking place right now. Of course, I confronted Jeff Zucker, sort of like the stuff that Mike Wallace used to do at 60 Minutes. I stood outside his house, the CEO of CNN. Do you think he would talk to me? No. James, James O'Keefe, how are you? Give a comment about the Russia story. No, he literally ran right by me. So that was Which is a pretty cowardly, cowardly yeah, thing, by the way, because I'm standing cowardly. outside of his house, and comment, right before he comes out, one of his people come out to talk to me to try to that deflect me. There, wasn't it? I mean, all he's got to do is ask, answer the question, and he refuses. And, and it's, so, it's often the case that journalists don't even leave their desks. They just get out of their limousine, go to their desk, read off the teleprompter, and go back into the limousine. It used to be the case that journalism had some integrity. Before I was born, Walter Cronkite, the most trusted man in America, the vast majority of people trusted him and network news. Many of you in the audience are old enough to remember Walter Cronkite. He became synonymous with trust. So what happened? Why, how we got here? People say, well, undercover work, this is a new type of technique. It's not. People used to win Pulitzer Prizes for going undercover and exposing to doing muckraking sort of investigative journalism. This was common. It was common in Chicago. The Chicago Sun-Times won multiple Pulitzer Prizes for doing things far less involved than what Project Veritas has done. In one case, the Chicago Sun-Times actually purchased a bar and put hidden cameras in it for a year and filmed all the bribes and kickbacks. Can you imagine any newspaper or television student uh, station doing that today? That would never happen. Why? Well, there's some reasons I'm going to get into in a moment. And this is, this is a, a scene from the Chicago Sun-Times. They literally had the city inspector on tape talking about giving a bribe. Now, when's the last time you saw that on television? Can you name an investigative reporter in America who's actually willing to do this? No. They can't. Thank you very much. Project Veritas is doing it. And then in the late 70s, what happened is many of these people, right after Watergate, decided we're not going to be doing this type of journalism. We're not going to be doing this muckraking journalism. Maybe it became too real. Maybe they thought too high of themselves. Maybe they just became, they thought of themselves as sort of new gods but they were unwilling to do the work that they used to do. And integrity went by the wayside along with it. We, we think a few things happen. Greed, laziness, and fear. These are the three factors. Each of them has their own way. I, notice how I don't put politics, which is maybe what you all might think, that they're all just leftists. Well, a lot of them are, but it's not all politics. A lot of it is just greed, laziness, and fear. Let's talk about greed. You might, be, you might think it's ironic that I'm quoting Noam Chomsky at a Freedom Fest conference. But Noam Chomsky said, the mass media are drawn into a symbiotic relationship with powerful sources of information by economic necessity. He also said that it's just a matter of cost. Why would you take a story from Project Veritas when you can show squirrel, squirrels on a skateboard on Good Morning America, right? It's just easier. You don't have to deal with the liability. And this is actually a true story. This is going to make you laugh. The story we did during the election on Hillary Clinton, which prompted two senior Democratic officials to resign because they were caught on hidden camera talking about all the fraud they were going to commit. Fox News spiked that story. And while the story was the number one trending video in the world on YouTube and trending on Facebook, I turned on Fox News. This is from the day that my story was, our story was trending, and I saw this on television. There you go. News. That's more important. Trending. That's more important. That's more important because this is more important. 
I wonder if they check with the corporate office. This is what they're airing right now. Cats playing patty cake. But you know what? It's easy to put cats playing patty cake on. And, I don't, and, and it's not about this specific network, it's about all networks. It's easy to put this type of stuff on television. It's bubble gum, it's, it's, it's pop culture, it's meaningless. There's no risk involved. And there you have it, the greed, the, the, the showing the greed, the, the supervising producer at CNN saying it's all about the money. We've never had anyone say that before. Second factor, laziness. And I'm going to show you a personal example. I show you the personal examples because people often are deterred from doing this type of journalism based upon what they do to people like me. Let's take a look at something. I was arrested and falsely accused seven years ago in Louisiana. A lot of people on the left forget what the word falsely accused actually means. When you take on people in power, they're going to come after you. People were reporting that I committed a felony, that I tampered with phones, that I did something illegal inside a senator's office. Many of these journalists were just plain lazy. Of course, they hate me, but they were lazy. And look what happened. He said I was caught for trying to tap the phones. Maybe you've heard this thing about us. That I was arrested for trying to do some type of wiretapping scheme. Well, what happened? And they even put my mugshot on the front page of the New York Times above the fold. What's interesting is the New York Times is not interested in any of the actual work we do. Why would they be interested in my arrest? Of course, I was just in a federal building with a camera. I wasn't actually doing anything illegal. And this is what happened. A third man is alleged to have waited outside in a car with a listening device. This is what they were saying, that we had a listening device. It turns out the listening device that we had was our iPhone. The media, and this, these are just examples, things you don't see. These are, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. The, the little things that help you understand how the media uses information warfare as a propaganda tool to mislead you. I had an iPhone in my pocket, and the government arrested me for wiretapping due to the fact that I had a listening device. It gets worse. They even admitted they, they were wrong. They said, quote, we were off a little bit acknowledged the Columbia Journalism Review when they said that I tried to maliciously fear with the phones. And after this whole legal incident, the government even admitted that I was there to just capture conversations on video and not to actually tamper with the phone systems. But these are the things you don't see. These are the things they selectively edit out of their articles about James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. And I bet most of you have never even seen that. But this is the truth. Of course, I have my fun. When they lie about us, we do what we do best, which is confront them. Kirsten? Hi. James O'Keefe. Would you mind correcting the fact that you said I committed a uh, felony? And notice, we found some notice the faces, which become memes, by the way. My, fa my favorite is when she's driving off the cliff with Selma and Louise. But this is, the inter this is why we love the internet. They, people have started making memes. But they genuinely fear the truth. They, and this is, this is Brad Woodhouse on Fox News just calling us names. Here's the problem with, uh, with James O'Keefe. He's a liar. He's a convict. And he's been successfully sued. I mean, it's all just words. And They're just characterizations. In a, in a it's not true. They deal in characterizations, we deal in cinema verite or reality. Here's the problem. Let me show you another example. New Hampshire. Voter fraud. They say voter fraud doesn't exist, right? Doesn't exist. George Stephanopoulos will tell you it does not exist, so we go and actually show that it does exist by catching a Bernie Sanders supporter talking about illegally registering at his address and talking about New Hampshire poll workers saying that you can actually live in New Hampshire for various periods of time, maybe not no time at all, and vote. Who I have had to be in, in New Hampshire to vote today? Probably 48 hours. Uh -huh. How long do I have to stay in New Hampshire to vote today? Um, there's no requirements. Do you have to vote in Colorado then? No, I wouldn't hear. Oh, you did? Uh, 
Oh, so you registered in Manchester. Yeah. How did you do that, though? What, what address did you use? This one. Yeah. Oh, really? In the office? Yeah, Wendy. James O'Keefe, Project Veritas, how you doing? Did you vote in New Hampshire here? Uh, it's a whole uh, question yeah. related to the uh, National Drawing Committee. Okay, what do you think about law enforcement getting involved in this? Sir? Sir? No comment? Can you say voter fraud caught on camera? So they say it doesn't exist. We expose it. He registered to vote illegally at his campaign office. And, and here's what they do. This is what they try to do. They sent us three letters threatening a criminal grand jury subpoena, one letter after the release of each video. Most people would back down, getting all these letters threatening criminal activity because they can't accept reality. They can't accept this stuff exists. This is literally a fight of good versus evil, of truth versus darkness. We're trying to give the American people information and they're trying to put me in jail. It doesn't get any worse than that. These people are of the left. You'd think they'd care about justice and, 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 and equality and, and, and freedom to pursue the first. They don't. They want to put us in jail. But there are always funny, ironic sort of things that happen. The universe has a way of, of being uh, ironic and uh, interesting. I walk to deliver my tapes to the governor of New Hampshire and this man walks up to me. I thought he was a fan. He looked just like an ordinary guy. Turns out he was some type of investigator from the state of New Hampshire. The street to give the footage to the governor. And I'm walking through the, through the area there and this guy walks up to me and he hands me a criminal grand jury subpoena. Now the guy's name is actually Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy. There was another guy whose name, this is the Associate Attorney General, his name is Richard W. Head. <laughs> so, I got a lot of dicks in my life at Ver Veritas. But New Hampshire changed the law to require a photo ID. You'd never even know it. The media, you certainly haven't seen these videos on television. But the people of New Hampshire were so outraged by what we exposed that they overrode the governor's veto of the legislation and changed the law to require a photo ID law because of what we did, despite Richard Head, despite Richard Tracy. And sometimes it doesn't require. It doesn't require this fancy months-long investigation. It requires just a 10-second video on your iPhone. This is us crossing the border dressed like Osama bin Laden. He's back! Not bin Laden, James O'Keefe! This video, it's from the conservative watchdog group, Project Veritas. Waiting across the Rio Grande to show how easy it is to evade border security. So we're crossing the border dressed like Osama bin Laden. The government says the border is secure. I'm just traipsing back and forth across this border dressed like the world's most famous terrorist. I'm waving at the border guards who are miles away and they're driving in the opposite direction. You can't be any more outrageous. This is perhaps more outrageous than the Acorn Pimp video to be dressed this way. But what does the government do in response, do you think, to this video? When I cross the border, every time, for a year and a half, they detain me. And they ask me questions like, who are you voting for? What's your next video? Why are you doing this? Of course, it's against the law to even record video of these encounters with the Border Patrol. This is the world that we live in. You try to expose the truth and they try to put you in jail, they harass you, they harass your family. And it's a deterrent to other people. There is, a, there is hope which I will get to in a second, but I, I wanted to show you this. This is my passport document where they put an X through it and they literally asked me who I'm voting for. What do I think about Donald Trump? They tried to get into my phone. I said, sir, I'm a journalist. If I give you my phone, you'll have all the people that I work with. They say, give me your phone, unlock the phone or we'll arrest you. This is what they said. And there are people like us, David Delayden, dared to investigate an organization called Planned Parenthood and California Attorney General's office raided his home with AR-15 assault rifles. They raided his home and took his hard drives because the videos were too dangerous. 
Kamala Harris, who may be running for president, gets donations from Planned Parenthood. The third factor is fear, and I think that all the aforementioned things that I've just told you about contribute to people being afraid. This is a clip from our Democracy Partners investigation of Mr. Scott Fovel, who was the top political operator in Wisconsin, talking about breaking the rules, breaking the law, and committing voter fraud in order to win a presidential election. It doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We're, we need to win this motherfucker. Well, I call this conflict engagement. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, your, that's your version of reenfranchisement. Conflict engagement in, in the lines at Trump rallies. We're starting anarchy here. No, I'm saying we have mentally ill people. Mm. We pay to do shit. Make no mistake. Hillary like is aware of all the work that you guys do. I hope. Well, I mean, Hillary knows who she is. Yeah. So there you have it. Both of these individuals were fired by the Hillary campaign. Bob Kramer, best friends with Barack Obama, telling you, the American people, that Hillary knows about everything that Scott Fogel just said. Dynamite story, blew up on social media. We had this story, I'm gonna tell you something that, no one, that people haven't heard before. You're gonna see this right here. We had this story ready to release on major media organizations, not just Fox News, but others. And they spiked this story at the last second. And we actually have a recording of my conversation with one of the media executives. Check this out. All right, all right. Get it, we're in the production room, what's up? He okay. couldn't get the approval and, uh, that was to air those videos. Bob Creamer was in his office with a metaphorical gun pointed to their media executive's head. Do you know what they were afraid of? Can anyone take a guess? This is weeks before the presidential election, and we have videos of their top Hillary officials talking about committing fraud. They were afraid of Hillary Clinton's FCC once she became the President of the United States. They were unwilling to share with you all the truth for fear of retaliation by their own government. Now, we're not afraid. Project Veritas is not afraid. But there's nowhere left for me to go. You, why don't I see this video on television? Well, you hear, heard it here, folks. Now you know why you don't see these videos on television, including Fox News, by the way. Because they're afraid. They're afraid. And we're not afraid. And there's a lot of people who are now rising up and saying, we're not afraid either. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm getting close to closing here. These videos on CNN were the number one trending video three days in a row. Everyone was flocking to see them. 100 million Twitter impressions in just a few weeks and those numbers are rising, people are leaving the media in spades and they're going wherever they can go to get actual real information. Things are changing in our country and you all are the tip of the spear. It's our responsibility to be journalists. We can't expect them to be journalists. We can't expect it. And of course they're going to try to ban us from Twitter, ban us from Facebook. Hint, hint, that might be investigation we have coming. But our stories still make the front page of the New York Times. Our stories still make CNN. They still make it through because of you guys tweeting the stories out. Now what's next? People say, who are you going after next? There's a lot of other media organizations that need to be exposed. And I want to do an informal poll here. I want you to just clap or yell or whatever when I ask you which of these other organizations you'd like me to go after. First, who would like us to go after MSNBC? And by applause, by noise, who would like us to expose with hidden cameras the Washington Post? 
And who here would like us to release undercover videos inside their holy grail, the New York Times? Well, it appears that we have a winner. Stay tuned. Thank you very much.